How's it going, guys? Um, first off, if you hear a weirdness in my voice, don't worry. It um, I'm just now getting over being sick. It wasn't COVID. It was just some sinus weirdness. And uh, so that's why my voice is going to sound like this today. I hope it's not too disturbing or distracting. Uh, but I got to get a video out. And I want to show you guys my uh, my favorite motion graphics trick. You might say, oh, this is super easy. I should have thought of this. And it is it is super easy. I use it all the time in my motion graphics and I'm gonna show you how to use it creatively and really interestingly. Uh, but first we're gonna do a little bit of modeling to make it look really cool, and then we'll use the motion, and then we're gonna export it. Now first thing, I do wanna shout out today's sponsor, which is also what we're gonna be using at the end of the video. Today's sponsor is Concierge Render by CoreWeave, the premier render farm for Blender and Cinema 4D. Concierge Render gives a fully managed platform to access over 50,000 GPUs available on CoreWeave Cloud. This means users can leverage the fastest, most cost-effective rendering platform with the ability to use the industry's broadest range of GPU types. Setup is easy and all new users receive $5 of free credit. Whether you're a hobbyist, freelancer, or a professional studio, Concierge Render is a great solution to meet the tightest turnaround times on any budget. You can sign up today by clicking the link below the video. All right, we're back. So let me put on my glasses and we're gonna get going on this project. So open up just a blank scene here in your uh, render, and we're gonna be using the EV render engine just to export it out because Concierge does give you EV rendering ability. All right, so what we're gonna do is first just get in a nice UV sphere, and I'm going to uh, just subdivide it once so that there's no visible you know, changes in the smoothness. We're gonna right click and shade smooth here. Now what I'm gonna do is give you a little sort of satisfying animation theory here. So why this looks nice and uh, we'll get into that in a minute. But what I'm gonna do is show you a little bitty mod modeling trick. If you don't care about the modeling and you wanna go straight into just the motion, just skip ahead and I'll show you how to use the, uh, the rotation theory. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and just have some fun with modeling. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a circle. I've said go ahead so many times, I'm sorry. Uh, so first we have this, you can see it's a little low poly. Um, not that there's polygons, but you kind of get the idea. So we're going to up the resolution of this guy here. And then what I'm going to do is get in a fun little modifier called the build modifier. So we're going to get this guy. And if you bring your start frame down, this guy will start to, you know, build. If you press play, it will animate the build. Or if you click uh, randomize, you can actually randomize this build. So it's actually a pretty fun little add on. I mean, uh, uh, modifier, but I'm going to be using it just to actually build my shape non-destructively. So we have that. I'm going to go back here into the settings and give it a little bit of an extrude, and then it just flips. That's fine. So we have an extrude here, and then we're going to go into the modifier to actually give it uh, extrusion on a different axis here with a solidify. I'm going to shade flat so I can see what's going on accurately, and we're going to bring up the thickness. I hope my horrible voice isn't too disturbing. And then the last thing to make it look nice, again, satisfying theory here. You don't want sharp edges. That's not fun to look at. It looks like if you brushed your finger hard enough on it, it would cut it. And that's not really fun to look at. We're going to click bevel. Because this is a arch, we're going to be switching the bevel limit method to angle because it's an angle. Bring your amount, however, you know, however thick you want to make your bevel. I'm going to give myself uh, four segments, right click, shade smooth. And now we have a perfectly smooth object and I'm gonna make him a little bit thicker. But you notice this is completely non-destructive um, and you can change this at any point in the modeling process and you'll be totally cool. So I'm gonna go right about there. And um, yeah, so now we have that. I'm gonna bring my sphere back into view and I'm gonna bring this guy all the way out, possibly make him a good amount thicker. So what I'm gonna do here, now I'm gonna right click and convert to mesh because we're gonna to need to apply some stuff and having it like this, you can't apply it. So now we're going out of the non-destructive workflow into destructive, which is we are no longer able to edit this. It is now complete mesh data. And you know, it's fine. We already have what we want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift D, scale it out like this. Shift D, scale it out. Shift D, scale it out. And I'm gonna give myself one more just because we like a lot of rotations. Now, the idea and the trick I'm gonna show you is rotating things and making it look like it's random using different speeds, 
and different um, different things like that. Just a little bit of math. That's the MoGraph trick. But what I don't want when it comes to making this animation satisfying to look at is them for all of them to meet back here at some point in the animation because they're all going to rotate. But if this is the starting point, they'll get back to there at some point and it doesn't look that good. So what we're going to do here is just hit R twice and rotate these guys around so their starting point already feels like they're, you know, in that random kind of vibe that we're going for. So we're going to bring it here like that. And now we have a pretty good starting point. But what we need to do is just highlight everything, control A, apply rotation so that when we look here into the rotations, everything is zeroed out. So they'll never actually meet at the same point and let have like an ugly animation. So now that we're here, let's begin animating this guy and make it look awesome. So what this is, is rotations here on the X, Y, and Z. And we're going to do some math. So we want it to loop. So we're going to be do rotating it at 360 degrees. But 360 degrees is one speed. If I want it to be faster, I can actually make it 1080 or 720. So it starts at 360. The double speed is 720. Double that speed is 1080. And you can go crazy with it with anything you want to do. And we're going to be using these three axes as our options. And we can do negative 360, positive 360 as a way to randomize what we're doing. So we're going to take uh, just this guy. And just to show you, now I want to make sure in my preferences, edit preferences, animation, my keyframe interpolation is at linear. So it doesn't slow down at the end and beginning of the animation. I'm going to give myself 250 frames because um, it's going to look really nice at that speed. Hit the back arrow to start at frame zero, and I'm going to use these two axes right there. So what I'm going to do is go to the end here, 360 and 360, and give those animations. So now he's going to be animating just like that. So he's doing his thing. I'm going to go back to frame zero, pick him, and we're going to go with these bottom two. I'm going to give myself negative 720 to make that axis faster than this one, positive 360, put it in there. And now we have this happening here. And we can have so much fun with this. This is the smallest one in the middle. So what I want to do, make him do is rotate the fastest. So I'm going to have this axis and this axis right here. So I'm going to give it 1080, 1080, and 720 right here, 720. So we still have a variable in our rotation. So he's going crazy. Notice none of them are following each other because we're doing negatives, positives, and double speeds. So it just kind of gives that really random feeling in our rotations. So we'll click this guy here. I'm going to go here and here. In the middle, I'm going to go negative 360. And we're going to go, I'm going to say negative 1080. Actually, no, negative 720. These bigger ones on the outside, I don't want them rotating too quickly. So now we have that. Again, he's not following anyone, and it looks really nice. The last one we have is this little guy. So we'll go with these top two here, and we'll go both give them positive 360. And now we have this really, really cool and absolutely satisfying animation here, and we're doing this really fun. Now, if you want to stick around for the rest of the video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly make a quick render with this so it looks awesome. And then we're going to run into Concierge and we are going to render this so I can show you how awesome Concierge is. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to get a volume object. Actually, well, I want to shade him first. Just give it the quick little metal material. So we're going to click that, make it metallic. I'm going to hit A, Control L, Materials. And we're going to head into Shading. And I'm just going to give it a quick... Um, grunge kind of material. So I'm going to do that. So shift A, C, O, L for our color ramp. Just common things. You've seen me do this a thousand times on the channel. Unless you're new to the channel, welcome. This is a really quick little thing. So we're going to get our Musgrave, the, the Rust Master. If you have the Node Wrangler add-on, give yourself a mapping and a texture coordinate with control T. I'm going to give my height here. I'm going to get my dimension down, detail up, scale at 0 0.5. So now we have this and I'm going to meet this black color here, right there. And we're going to make this a little farther down. Now we have 
just a really cheeky quick thing here. I'm not trying to spend too much time in this spot. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a really big cube because I'm going to make a volume object. Get that, control A, scale, new, and we're going to go here. Click on this and go to principled volume. Click on the shading window right there. We're going to switch it over here to volume and give my density at 0 0.1. Actually, 0 0.01, just like that. Go back to layout. I want to make sure my world brightness is at 0. I'm going to hit Z, go to the rendered view. And then I'm going to go ahead and get a quick little point light right here. Point light. I'm going to hit G and bring him out. The reason why I added the volume, you'll see that in just a second. You'll watch the magic of volume and light together. Make sure ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections are turned on in your EV settings. And I'm going to go with a power of 1,000. Look at that. And I love a little blue in my animation, so we're going to do that. I'm going to take this little point light. I'm going to hit Shift D. Bring them over here with the G so we have more lighting on that. I hit right here on my camera. Pop that into view just like that. I honestly love the contrast where it's super dark here, super bright here. So I'm just going to hit the render button just to see how it looks. And we have this. I do have motion blur turned on right here. So make sure if you really want to make give it that really cool vibe. Give it some motion blur. Uh, but in the rendering, this honestly looks awesome. I'm going to leave it at that. We have 250 frames. I'm going to go ahead and save my file and head on over into Concierge. All right, so be sure to click the link in my description if you want to head on over here into Concierge. And I'm going to go over here to Upload and Launch Renders. And I'm going to upload my files. So we're going to go here and just upload that super quick. We have our files in here. All right, so our file right here. I'm going to Actions and Launch Render. So now you have all these options here. I'm at Blender 2.92. We are an EV. It is an animation. You can go ahead and actually specify if you don't want all your frames rendered. You can check the resolutions. I'm going to just keep everything at default. Hardware, fun stuff here. And we're going to go ahead and render this guy. Now I'm going to click on the Job Manager and just wait for it to happen. So we're going to go here, click View Details. It is running the animation. All this fun stuff is happening. And once we're done, we will have your animation ready. So now we're done, it was really, really quick, and the total cost here is 45 cents for my 250 frames at 1080p resolution. So it wouldn't even cost that much more to get this in 4K. And then all we'll have to do is get in and download the outputs, which is a zip file. It's gonna give you a PNG sequence, and you're done. So there you go, guys. That is my favorite MoGraph trick. Just rotations, using them as creatively as possible with different models. Craziness is an endless variety you can do with this. I use it all the time. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it.